So we've already defined our Minkowski inner product. Now I might start giving this the symbol inner product and then maybe an M there just to remind us this is the Minkowski inner product. Which then leads us on to being able to define the norm. So we can talk about the, now the Minkowski length or the norm of any vector. And we know that's just going to be given by the square root of our metric tensor eating two copies of our vector. And so, of course, in Minkowski space, we know the metric components. And so we can see that any vector, its now square norm, is going to be given by now some set of coefficients multiplying our vector components. And we can now write and express this in a number of ways. If you remember, I can just lower one of these indices and realize this as being the object u0 u0 plus ui ui, just kind of now separating our time and spatial pieces. And now be really careful, there's no minus sign in here yet, because we've kind of kept the minus sign hidden in these now one form components, this u0, just really quickly, u0 with a lower index, we can understand as being the metric component 0, 0, contracted against the u0 upper index, and so just really quickly, we'll then see that u0 is minus u upper 0. I've just kind of hidden that in the definition of this component. So that's just one way to write it down. And of course, we know it has its more usual expression, which is minus the two vector components squared and then plus. If you, if you like, effectively, the Euclidean dot product, or just the product of our spatial vector components. So this is the form, if you like, of our Minkowski in a product. It's just kind of taking the vector components, multiplying them together, or just squaring them, and then adding them together with some minus or positive coefficients. So one way to kind of view a norm of this form is now in the following way. We're saying that we take, well, we take the vector components and then we square, we square the components and then we add them together with either a negative or positive coefficient. And so if you like, we can express the distance formula as now a sum up to some number p of a negative quantity squared plus some amount q of a positive quantity squared. And now this thing, just some kind of sum of some squared things, is what we would sometimes refer to as a quadratic form just really means an object which has the form of something squared and then a sum of things squared. And so if we just had purely pluses in here, we would say that this is a positive or a definite quadratic form. But because we now have some minus signs appearing in here, this is what's known as an indefinite quadratic form. And so another way to understand our norm is in terms of a quadratic form. And so we can see in our Minkowski case, because of this minus sign, this norm can now be positive and zero and also negative. If we just quickly compare, if I just remind us that this is, sorry, the Minkowski norm squared. If I just compare this with now the Euclidean square norm, we see that the Euclidean norm 
is simply just given by a purely positive sum of the components squared. So this is what we would call a definite quadratic form. We know essentially that it's always going to be greater than zero because it's formed out of the squares of any quantity and just we're implicitly always working with real vectors so we know that these components are always real numbers and so this would be a definite quadratic form and now don't let all this new terminology start throwing you off quadratic form is just a fancy way of saying a sum of something that's squared and we should really now just realize that we're talking about our um, norms that we've developed on our vector spaces and we now can understand effectively this expression here is this expression and we just now realize that these metric components are now just telling us whether which coefficient we need to add in front of each object. So really what I should have done is said I'm indexing each of these components so this is going to be sum over sum i up to p of ui squared and then sum up to j for q times and so just to reconcile this with what we've done up here what we can now realize is that this Minkowski norm is now describing an indefinite quadratic form and we specify the quadratic form by giving what it's called or what's known as its signature which essentially is just telling us these two numbers p and q which just tell us how many negatives and how many positives to add in so I'll just rub out our definite one for now. We can now realize our Minkowski in the product. We have its expression written here. So we can see we've got one minus and then three pluses. So our, we would then say that our quadratic form is going to have signature P is one and Q, the number of pluses is Three. So then in general, a quadratic form of signature PQ would look like P lots of the first U naught up to P components taken with a negative and then squared and then from P up to Q the remaining components U square and have been positive. So just another really really now fancy way of saying what the Minkowski metric is, is you can say that it's an indefinite quadratic form with signature 1 and 3. Okay, so I'll just rub this out now.